and all the from Leicester, welcome, welcome, uh, Sister Abigail, uh, our own evangelist, Donna Gukuletu. Yes, those two evangelists, great women of God, and our very own apostle, we give God praise. And those that I cannot see, Sister Rachi, and uh, uh, our own general, glory to God, we welcome you to our live Bible, Bible study. You know, it, it won't be a year without looking at um, the woman with an issue of blood. I was preaching from this today at church. You know, it's amazing that you can preach from something over and over again, and then you even get more revelation from the story. Uh, let's turn our Bibles to Mark 5 from verse 23. Mark 5 from verse 20, 22. Right. Now, our topic that we have been looking at is hearing God. Now, we, 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 we looked at this, we came out, then we, we, we've come back again, because this is very, very important. I think um, God is really talking to us that we need to hear God. In Mark chapter 4, we looked at different types of grounds, which is the heart. Remember the parable of the saw? The saw was to sow a seed. The seed is the word of God, right? So some fell on a um, way wide you know, the way white or on the road. Some fell on a stony area, some fell on a or rocky area, some fell on a thorny area, and some fell on a good soil. Glory to God. So what we want is to cultivate our hearts. So Jesus, when he was um, elaborating on that, he says the good soil is the heart. Now, as Christians, we hear with the heart. We don't hear with our mind. Mm -mm. We hear with with the heart. It's with the heart that we actually hear. We hear with the heart. Let, let, let me quickly uh, show you this in um, Romans 10. Romans 10, right? Romans 10, verse 8. Right? Romans 10, verse 8. Uh, now, Romans 10, verse 8. Romans 10, verse 8. Mm, where should I start? Verse 7. Oh, who will descend into the deep? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does I what does it say? Verse 8, Romans 10, 8. What does it say? The word is near you. The word is near you. The word is near you. Right? You have to say this. The word is near me. Right? You have to declare it upon you, yourself. The word is near me. The word is near me. Now, what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth. That's why I said you have to declare. It is in your mouth. It's, it's not in heaven. Mm -mm. It's not in the abyss or the, the realm of the dead. You know, this is the word is near you. It is in your mouth and it is in your heart. It is in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. Verse 9. I know we use this scripture to talk about um you know, salvation when we come into Christ. But I want you to take note of what he says here. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So whatever you believe in your heart and you begin to proclaim it, right, you will see salvation. The word saved here is the Greek word sozo. And Greek word sozo, it encompasses everything. It speaks of marital blessing, financial blessing, healing, peace, joy. That is what that word saved means. So, so, glory to God. But what I want you to note here, it says, the word is in your mouth. The word is in your heart, right? It says, with the mouth, you know, with the mouth, we declare. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So the issue here, it's a hard issue. That's why when Jesus begins to talk about the different grounds that the seed falls into, it's different, different grounds. Glory to God. Those that heard the word, they were excited. That is the wayside. The devil came. He took that word out of the heart. Then those that were in a rocky area, they did not have enough roots. They did not have enough roots in their heart, meaning they are hearted many things. They had many things. They had not yet grown in the things of God. So when that word came in, I want you to take note. What was going to cause a result was the seed, which was the word of God. That was what was going to cause a result. That was what was going to bring a change. That was what was going to bring what a transformation. The word of God. We have to believe. 
that God's word is powerful. We have to believe that, you know, the word of God is final authority over our lives. Glory to God. So when they heard that word, the, 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 the one on the, on the rocky area, when they heard that word, the devil came immediately through persecution. They were persecuted. They faced the challenges. You know, if you don't realize that the challenges that you face is the enemy now coming against that way, you might give up. Many give up, many die. Glory to God. Many give up and many die. Those that fell on the way, on the thorny area, right? They, that, the seed that fell on the thorny area. It says the last of other things. The last of other things. The deceitfulness of wealth. Now in England, you say, ah, today is Sunday, I have to go for a shift. Or oh, ah, today is Sunday, there is something else I can do. I'm invited for lunch. You, you are not seeing that is the last of other things. That is easy to talk about it, right? But it's, it's the last of other things. I have to watch this series. I have to do this. You know, guilty as charged. I have to watch this series. I have to do this. The last of other things. Yet God might have spoken a word to you that, listen, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bring a transformation in your life. Now, then you get distracted. The last of other things, the last of other things. It says it quenches the word. It quenches the word. It stops the word from operating. Now, you've heard about healing, right? God has spoken to you about healing. Maybe you've been sick, right? But the last of other things, or the symptoms, which is the rocky, rocky area, the symptoms, they intensify. What do you do? You give up. The doctor tells you there is nothing we can do. You don't realize that the enemy is coming for that, for that way, right? Now, let's go to our text and we explain everything. Mark 5, Mark 5, Mark 5, verse, verse 22, right? Mark 5, 22. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came. When he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him. My little daughter is dying, right? Hmm. My little daughter is dying. Please come, put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him, right? Now Jesus is walking with this man. They are going to his house. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. Now, there was a huge crowd. If you knew Jesus, you know, there is a time in, in scripture in John chapter 6, 5,000 men, they left everything. They followed Jesus, right? Because people were following because they were seeing miracles. They were seeing what he was doing, right? So they were following him. So a large crowd followed and praised around him. It's very important. Remember what we are talking about? The heart. We hear with the heart. We speak that word with our mouth. Then there is manifestation, right? All right. So I want you to get Get a hold of what the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is painting a picture here. It's painting a picture, you know. So this is the picture we need to see. Whatever you're praying for, whatever you're believing God for, I want you to see the crowd, right? It could be the church, could be family, could be anybody who is around you. Glory to God. So that is the crowd. A large crowd followed and pressed around you. Now then, the next thing that we get, and a woman, and is a conjunction. So which means verse 25 is linked with the verse 24. That Jesus as he is going with the, with the Jairus. Remember, Jairus' faith is, I want you to come and touch my daughter. When you touch my daughter, she is sick to a point of, of death. Jairus had heard about Jesus and, she, and he came anticipating Jesus to touch. His faith was for Jesus to touch. Now, then there is a large crowd is now following Jesus, right? And a woman, which is, you know, the Holy Spirit is painting a, a picture here. And a woman, a woman, that is the key. Glory to God. So number one, she is a woman. If you understand the culture of that particular time, women were second class cities, right? She is a woman. Sometimes what stops us hearing God is our chain. I'm, I'm a woman. I am divorced. I am old, you know, I'm not educated enough. I don't have a, a, a business degree. I, I, you know, where I come from, my family is a woman. So you allow these excuses to stop you from hearing God. Remember, you hear with your heart. So in your heart, if already you're telling, I'm but a woman, you know, I'm too old. After all, I'm black. You know, so all these things, they can affect how you hear God. Now, that's why it's a conjunction. 
a crowd, right? Who, who got deeper? Yeah. A woman, a woman, this is powerful, a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding. Number two, she had an issue of bleeding. She had an issue of bleeding. So what can also influence us hearing God is this not knowing our issue, right? When you are praying, for example, maybe you're praying for marriage. What is the issue? What is the problem? See, this one understood what the issue was. It was an issue of bleeding. Because if you don't understand your issue and God is saying something that can help you to overcome that, you are thinking that God is going to act this way, is going to operate that way because you have the wrong diagnosis. You have a wrong prognosis, right? Whenever you go to a hospital and you are unwell and things are bad, the first thing they want to do is to find a diagnosis. There's nothing as bad as having a patient that the doctors do not know what the diagnosis is. Now, Countless times, many Christians here, we don't know the diagnosis, so we are bombarding heaven with our prayer. Now, this woman had an issue of bleeding. She knew her issue. She had an issue of bleeding. What is your problem? What is your diagnosis? Because if you don't know your diagnosis, right, and God is talking to you, how will you know that it is God talking to you? Glory to God. Let's go deeper. Okay. See, we've been praying for finances. We're praying for finances. Lord, I'm speaking for the angels of man. I'm releasing them, Lord, that they might go forth. Glory to God. Because you see, what I'm seeing is lack financially. So if I'm seeing lack financially, I think to call forth money, right? I have to speak to money as pastor so-and-so advised me, as prophet so-and-so advised me. So the issue I have is a money issue, right? Is that, that's what I'm seeing, right? I'm seeing a money issue. So I start talking about money. I start calling forth money. And then the Holy Spirit begins to talk to me concerning maybe honor, honoring my parents, honoring those that are above me spiritually. You know, it begins to talk to me about submission, begins to talk to me about loving my neighbor. Maybe I've got strife against my neighbor, right? What is your issue? That is the issue. Because my focus here is finances. My focus here is what I need. Glory to God. So since I need that, when the pastor at the church start talking, ah, this month is the month of financial breakthroughs. I'm telling you, money is coming from east, west, south, north. You know, northwest is coming from every direction. I'm excited. I start jumping. Yet that could not be the wait for me. I'm hearing with my mind. Because in my mind, I'm thinking, well, since he's talking about money, so this is money, money coming. I said money coming. But what is my issue? Because what can cause money to come my way? It could be the issue that I've just talked about. Submission. It would be the issue of love. It would be the issue of honoring parents. It could be the issue of going to church, praying for your pastors, praying for your leaders. Maybe you have allowed your mouth to run wild. You know, we all do those things, right? You have allowed your mouth to run wild, and then it has activated laws that are coming against man. What did I say? With the mouth, we declare. With the heart, we believe. Right? So when the sower is sowing a seed, that seed that he's sowing that I need to love, my, 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 my ears are shut. I'm not here. Why, why is he talking about loving, loving my neighbor? I'm not interested in this. I'm interested in my financial breakthrough. I'm interested in my healing. Maybe it's healing, right? And by his stripes, I'm healed. You hear? You know, there is an angel of healing. God has released an angel of healing here. The angel of healing is there. It's manifest, so you start shouting. The angel of healing is here. The angel of healing could not be. Sometimes that's not your word. Your word could be forgiveness. You need to forgive people that maybe have done you wrong, right? You are now focusing on that angel of healing. You, you are claiming healing. You are calling for the healing. So the preacher is preaching about the forgiveness. You say, what forgiveness? What is he talking about? Right? So these are the areas that I have seen, the principles that I've seen that sometimes as God's children, we miss these principles. We look at what we need. We look at the healing. We look at the marriage. We look at the financial prosperity. We look at what we desire rather than find out what is the issue. What is the diagnosis? What is the problem? This is a woman with an issue of bleeding, with an issue of bleeding. She has an issue of bleeding, she understands the issue. Now let's go deeper, right? And the woman who's the, and the woman who was there, who had been subject to bleeding, twelve years, twelve years. Again, 
she understands the issue, she is bleeding 12 years, 12 years, 12 years. You know, if you've been under a yoke for 12 years, it influences your thinking pattern. You develop strongholds in your thinking that even when God is talking to you that there is a change, there is a shift. If that thing has been there for 12 years, you've been struggling in that marriage for 20 years. You've been struggling in your finances for as long as you can remember. And God is releasing that word Oh, Jesus. Jesus is the way, right? Jesus is working with the crowd. Do you see him? Do you see him? Do you hear him? Or you are now focusing on these 12 years. You are focusing on the mountain. You see, the mountain has become so big now that when God is speaking to you, it becomes hard to hear what he is saying. Glory to God. 12 years. 12 also speaks of demonic authority. It also speaks of divine authority. In this case, this is demonic authority, demonic oppression. 12 is a number of authority. Glory to God is a number of power. She's been under the yoke for 12 years. Right? 12 years. So it can influence how you hear. That if God is talking to you, you've been there for 12 years. I'm sharing a church. I've shared this testimony about this 72-year-old lady who had been hospitalized for two months. In the hospital, two months, the platelet count has been one, two, one, two. Then we prayed, God supernaturally delivered the platelet count within two days. They showed up to 140 without any platelet infusion or anything. Supernaturally, God moved, but she had been partially blind. All her life, she'd been partially blind. She had learned to cope with the blindness. I was like saying, listen, we can pray for this blindness. If God could raise up the platelet, can God not cause you to see? Right? So, oh, no, 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 no. You see, that belief system, 12 years, 12 years. You see, she had had that issue for 12 years. She had had that woman been blind for a long, long time. Now to see or to hear God, you can't. Because you've been stuck here. You've been stuck here. The next. She had suffered a great deal under many physicians. Many physicians. You see, for the 12 years, she'd been relying on man. This is not a woman who was broke. This is a woman who was wise. She had resources. She had money. Sometimes what stops us hearing from God is we are trusting more in our resources. Proverbs 3, 5 says, trust, 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 trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. You see, my own understanding will be, I need to borrow money there so that I can fix it. But I need to buy my car on credit. I need to mortgage. I need to do this. The doctor needs to do this and that. Let me go. So when God is giving me a solution that is coming from him, I can no longer hear him. Because I'm trusting in my own resources. I'm trusting in what I have in my bank account rather than trusting God. I'm trusting in my spouse. I'm trusting in the pay that I get. So... I, I cannot see beyond that. So even when I'm praying, I'm praying for the pay, I'm praying for work, I'm not praying, trusting God, trust, trust in God with all your heart, with all what? Your heart, your heart, because it is the heart that will receive from God. It is the heart that the word of God is going to come through. It's the, and not the mind. Your mind can doubt, but does your heart trust? Your heart yet trusted in the resources that she had. Now, the resources were maxed out. The next, she suffered a great deal under the physicians. Physicians, 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 right? Physicians, physicians, physicians. That is the doctors. Physicians, not a physician. She had gone from different doctor to different doctor to different doctor. You see, countless times we put our trust on earthly things. We put our trust in people around us. Not that God does not want us to trust people. Not that God does not want us to receive people that are sent to us. But we need to come to a place where we begin to go to God. Physicians are doctors. She trusts in the medical profession and the medical profession disappointed it. Right? We can trust in the physical structures that are around us, that when God is speaking to us, lean not unto your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him. So when I'm trusting in the physicians, I'm trusting in the doctors, and the doctors are saying, listen, 12 years, we have done this, we have tried it. this treatment, it did not work, we have tried that treatment, it did not work, and God is saying something to me, will I hear it? 
Because I'm thinking that my solution is to come from physicians. Come understand that I have to talk to people, I have to talk to God's children. He says, you know, I need the doctor to confirm if I'm healed. I'm thinking, how dumb can we get and still breathe you know, that in the woman? You know, I'm thinking, listen, the God of heaven, now you want an earthly man to confirm your healing. Now you want somebody who is created like you because he's got a doctrine, because he's got a professor be, 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 before his name, glory to God, to proclaim that healing. Why don't you trust the word of God? Why don't you lean on God? This is what God is inviting us to, to just to lean on him, to trust in him, right? To trust in him, to lean on him. Physicians, you know, how many times do, when we get a negative report from the doctor, our faith goes out of the window. These are they that fell, glory to God, on a rocky area. They did not have roots. When persecution came for the word, when persecution came for the word, you know, for the word's sake, the word was choked. The word could not grow. Glory to God. See, when God says something to us, the physician might come with a negative report. The symptoms might be screaming. They might be telling you things are bad. Glory to God. Everything that you are praying for, it might get worse. Your marriage might get worse before it gets better. The children might get worse before they get better. So it is here if you are not trained how to stand and fight, if you are not trained how to wage warfare with the enemy, you might quit or, might, or you might continue praying because you are not seeing anything. Tough years, demonic authority. You have spent your money, you've trusted in money, now no money. Now you've trusted in doctors, the doctors can't do anything. Now everything is maxed out. Glory to God. You have reached the end of yourself. Many die instead of saying, looking up, looking up, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, looking unto him that died and rose from the dead, looking unto him who has sent the Holy Spirit to us. But no, I'm looking at this doctor, glory to God. When will we ever rise up and say, no, enough is enough. I have to trust what the word of God is saying to me. Glory to God. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many daughters, doctors, and had spent all she had. She spent all she had. I want you to take note. She had trusted doctors and she started spending money. I hate going to the hospital. You know, thank God here yeah, in England, which you know, which is really, really bad, which I shouldn't even be saying thank God. You know, it's not a, 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 a praise moment. You know, the NHS free health system is not really free. It's coming from our national insurance number that you can go to. Or you can see a heart specialist. There is no insurance like in America, right? But that one, it has incapacitated a lot of people. Many people no longer believe in the healing power of Jesus because they know they can see their doctor free of charge. They know they can get to the hospital and be admitted free of charge, get free food to free of charge. They know that those structures are there. So those are the structures that causes people not to trust God, not to lean to God, that even if God is talking to you about healing, you can hear him. In countries like England where there are benefits, now you know that if you are not working, there is this benefit, there is that benefit. If you are disabled, there is this benefit, there is that benefit. You start leaning on the system. That when God is talking to you, the system already is influencing your thinking that you can no longer hear what God is saying. Because now your trust is in the system, right? Instead of being in God, right? This is this woman. She grew worse. Nothing. First bed. Now watch this. <laughs> Verse 27. When she heard about Jesus. Now this is the solution. When she, I want you to take note, this is important. If there is anything you ought to write down, write down this. When she heard about Jesus, she did not hear about a preacher. She did not hear about how bad the situation is. She did not hear about, as for you, it, it, these are generational cases. Did your mother not have it? Did your uncle not have it? Did your auntie not have it? Did, you know, your sisters not have it. This thing, it, 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 it runs in the family. She heard about Jesus. Let me help you out. Leviticus 15, we shall be back. Leviticus 15, I want you to take note how difficult it was for this woman to hear about Jesus. The things that she had to overcome to hear about Jesus. Leviticus 15 verse 19, let's go deep. When a woman has a regular flow of blood, 
the impurity of a monthly period will last seven days. And anyone, anyone, anyone who touches her will be unclean till evening. See, that was the law. This is a woman who grew up under the Jewish culture. Under the Jewish culture, if you have an issue of bleeding, you can't come out of your house. You need to stay in isolation. Glory to God. When she heard about Jesus, what's this? What she had been hearing all her life had formed a belief system. Let's go to verse 25 of Leviticus. I want to read for you so that you can understand this woman, what she was going through, what was going through in her own mind. When a woman has a discharge of blood for many days at a time other than her monthly period, at a time other than her monthly period, or has a discharge that continues beyond a period, she will be unclean as long as she has the discharge. She will be unclean as long as she has a discharge. That woman was unclean. Now, according to the law, according to the law of Moses, according to the law of Moses, if she does anything, she comes out, she touches anybody, that person needed to be unclean as well till evening. Right, right. Let's go back to <laughs> When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. See, she had to overcome a stronghold of religious thinking. What have you heard about Jesus? The last time we go to church, we hear about the law. We hear about how bad it is. We are not hearing about Jesus. See, as I was meditating about this, I was asking, him, what did she hear about Jesus? What did she hear about Jesus? Do you know, faith comes, comes by hearing and hearing the good news. You don't get to hear about faith. The problem with so and so is this. The problem with so and so is this and that. I have been praying. I said, Lord, help us not to be judgmental. Help us not to condemn each other. Help us to tell people about Jesus. You see, the reason why people have problems is because, let me help us out today. We are not hearing about Jesus. We are hearing about ourselves. We spend our time looking at ourselves rather than looking at Jesus. When you hear about Jesus, you know the area where we have the problem, it will change. It will be transformed. When you focus on the light, Jesus is light, right? If you focus on the light so much, you focus on the light, you become what that light is saying. You see, but if you focus on, I've been bleeding for 12 years, this thing is bad. The law, the law of Moses is saying, I need to be in isolation. Oh, this is what you hear. Because they are from pulpit, that's what, that's the message. They preach. Then you don't see the manifestation of healing. That is the message. Oh, oh, God doesn't prosper anybody. The poorer you are, the closer to heaven you are. The devil is a lie. That is wrong. They, they preach. They say, money is the root of all evil. That's a lie. Money is not the root of all evil. The love of money is. You see, there are some things that we have heard. They have formed a belief system on the inside of us. And we think that is Jesus. Not everything. I need to whisper glory to God so that they don't hear me. Not everything that comes from the pulpit is from God. Glory to God. So you need to discern. And as you go to church, don't leave your brains behind at all. Bring those brains to church. Glory to God. Study. What did she hear about Jesus? What did she, what caused this woman who was under so much oppression? She heard about Jesus. And again, who did she hear from? Right? There are some people that will come your way. They will tell you some stuff. So you need to be attentive. You know, we, we have to pray. I have been praying a lot. You know, I have to be attentive more. Do you know, the Bible says, be quick to listen, slow to speak. Be quick to listen. Because as you are quick to listen, then you are going to hear about Jesus. Whatever issue you are going through, you are going to hear about Jesus. Watch this. You are going to hear about Jesus. But what many, <laughs> this is powerful revelation. Glory to God. This is a rhema now that is coming from heaven. This is what the spirit of the Lord is saying to me. It says, Lord, so many of my children have not heard about Jesus concerning their issue. Mm -mm. You have heard preachers say, so you take the weight of a preacher, right? No, I'm not saying that, that preachers will not be sent by God. Mm -mm. What I'm saying is you hear somebody's been preaching about healing, somebody's been preaching about marriage, somebody's been preaching about finances, so you are taking what they've been saying, right? You are, you are, you are bombarding heaven based on what somebody has said, but have you personally heard? 
Remember, you're here with your heart. Have you personally heard? Because if you have heard about Jesus, if you have heard about, I've heard about Jesus when it comes to healing. If you have heard about Jesus concerning something, you know how to, to stand up and fight. Because it's now a personal way. Then you begin to speak that which you have heard. But if you have, <laughs> if you have heard somebody say, it's, you know the parrot, you know the bird, the parrot, you know, a parrot can mimic somebody. He can say, good morning, yeah, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. But he starts a meal, but he starts a meal, but he starts a meal. It's a good place to start, <laughs> glory to God. But he said, you need to hear about Jesus. Because when you hear about Jesus, there are many things in scripture. When I look at especially healing, there is a, a, a man by the pool of Bethesda. The man by the pool of Bethesda, he's been uh, an invalid for 38 years. And Jesus comes to him, he says, do you want to be well? The man says, I've got no one to throw me into the pool when the waters are stayed up. Jesus says, pick up your mate and walk. Then later on, Jesus meets this man. I want you to take note. He meets this man, right? He healed him because of grace. When he meets this man, he says something that many of God's children don't pay attention to. He says to this man, see to it that you sin no more. Because if you do sin, a worse thing than this will come. A worse thing than this will come. Look, he got healed, but Jesus said to come again and address his sin. She heard about Jesus. You see, because I can be a parrot here. I've, I've seen the manifestation of healing. Oh, you're not hearing what I'm saying. I've seen the manifestation of healing here, but I go back to that which caused me to be sick in the first place. But if I've heard about Jesus, go sin no more, forgive, walk in love. I've heard about Jesus. Now I am working that which he has told me. I'm working out that which he has told me. It is the word that he has spoken to me that will produce results. She heard about Jesus. We need to start telling people about Jesus. We have to tell people about Jesus. Romans 10, 17. I'm going to quote it for you in a way which is meant to be understood. This is what it says, literal translation of Romans 10, 17. Many people have quoted that scripture, right? But they don't know what it actually, where, where it comes from and what it means. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing, that's why there's two hearing there, which is understanding. Right? It's a hearing with an understanding, right? It's a hearing with an understanding. So when you have heard about Jesus, then you start understanding. You start understanding what marriage is. You start understanding what finances are. You start understanding what healing is. You start understanding because it's a hearing with understanding. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing. Now what's this? By the good news about Jesus. That is the literal translation. Or faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word about Jesus Christ. The word, which is the rhema, it is the quickened word of God. You might not understand what I'm talking about. The rhema, the rhema, what I am saying is when you are praying for something, you, you are praying for something, then what you hear the spirit of the Lord is saying to you, which resonates with your heart, that is the rhema. That is the rhema and it's about Jesus. It's about what Christ has done. It's the good news about Jesus. This is what that woman heard. She heard about Jesus. Because she heard about Jesus, she was able to overcome Leviticus 15, 19, and 25. She had to come out. You see? But if we are stuck here, I want you to take note. If we are stuck here, we have been listening to people that there is no healing. There is no financial prosperity. There can never be any restoration. You know, um, you know where I, my wife was showing me something today, a, a, a joke. Somebody who is seeking to sell his second-hand wife, you know, he says, he speaks 3,441 words in, in, in three minutes. You know, it, it was a joke, glory to God. Somebody was saying something bad about women. So if that is what you have heard about women, that is what you have heard about men over and over and over again. That is what you have heard. There is no healing. There is no financial prosperity. There is no this. There is no that. If that is what you are hearing, glory to God, it creates demonic stronghold that the word of God cannot penetrate through. That's why I have a gift. It's called goodbye. Glory to God. Because if you are in an environment 
that does not create an atmosphere that you can hear from heaven. Heaven responds when you hear about Jesus. She heard about Jesus. She heard about Jesus. She did not hear about how bad your situation is. See, when we always hear how bad your situation is, how bad you are, how bad you are, I need to change this. I need to change the question. <laughs> Listen, did you die for yourself? This is, this is a question that I always ask people. Did you die for yourself? Did you hang on the cross and die for yourself? Really? Did you resurrect you know, by yourself? See, that is what destroys many of God's children. Glory to God. You are focusing on yourself rather than hearing about Jesus. Jesus, what are you saying concerning this thing? Because Jesus is good all the time. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with the power. Who went about doing good? What God wants to do is good. Glory to God. God is good. If you could love me while Easter was still a sinner, how much more now? How much more now that I'm preaching the gospel? So I don't need to perform for people to, to, to love me. Glory to God. I don't need to perform religiously. She heard about Jesus. She heard about Jesus. Because here, the things that we have been taught at church, I'm telling you, it's scary. We have to perform. I have to do this to get God to do something. I have to do this. I have to do that. I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to do that. Listen, uh -uh. we just have to believe in Jesus. She heard about Jesus. When we hear, then we do. Glory to God. When we hear, then we, we put it to work. When we hear, then there is an action. Glory to God. Even when I'm praying, yesterday we were praying. Yes, as I was praying, I was like, Lord, prayer should not be a struggle. Why are we struggling when we are praying? You know, and then I, the Lord brought me the Lord because prayer should be a relationship. You are spending time with me. Then the things that are wrong, you change them because you have heard about me. You have spent time in my presence. When you spend time in my presence, then you begin to speak. When you spend time in my presence, that which ought to be corrected, if it's unforgiveness, you will hear me. I will tell you, no, you know, and the way God says it, it won't be from a place of condemnation. Mm -mm. The way he says it, the way he begins to teach you, he's going to teach you from a place of love because he's a loving father. You will not be condemned. But when you spend time looking at yourself, how you ought to change this, how you ought to change that, that is why sometimes even as parents, we can become effect, ineffective of our children because we are looking at their behavior. So we start preaching behavioral modification. We are trying to change them. So when we are with them, we are bombarding. You ought to change this. You ought to change that. Then it drives them away. I was talking to my wife uh, to, to, to today as I was preparing this message. I said, listen, imagine somebody who comes to you and is always criticizing your children all the time, telling them how bad so-and-so is, how bad so-and-so is. Uh, what will you do? So uh, uh, why then, even at the church, when we are coming, it's the pulpit, you, you, you're criticizing, you know, you are putting people down. Well, the problem, the reason why you are not healed is this. The reason why there is no manifestation is that there is, listen, hear about Jesus. If there is something wrong, he will tell you. He will show you. She heard about Jesus. She heard about Jesus. Now watch this. Jesus might not be here to tell you. Now you might have spiritual leaders that might tell you as they pray with you, as they descend from the spirit, they might tell you that, no, the reason why you're struggling here in this place of marriage is because you know you, 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 are not, you are not humble enough. You're not humble enough to learn from those that have gone ahead, those that have, have passed, those that are, 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 are there. You're not humble enough. So as they begin to teach you, to guide you, glory to God, then you grow. But Jesus is not here. Now, Jesus was there in Mark chapter 5. She heard about Jesus. No, listen, let me come out of here. She heard about Jesus. When she heard about Jesus, watch this. She heard about Jesus. And she came up behind him in the crowd, the crowd. Remember, she is bleeding the crowd. The crowd does not hinder her from touching Jesus. She is not allowing people to be a hindrance touching Jesus. That's the crowd. See, sometimes we like to hang around the crowd. You want to find out your, my, my sixth cousin, my sixth cousin from, from my uncle's uncle son. <laughs> you know, what are they saying concerning this? You know, oh, my, my, my friend, what is she saying concerning the crowd? This woman was not moved by the crowd. See, she heard about Jesus. She had, a, she had to come through the crowd. She had to press through the crowd. You see, this again addresses another belief system, which is wrong. 
How many times when we pray for healing, right? There are some. They, they sit down, they expect, ah, God is going to heal me, sitting down. Yeah, there are times when God does that. But there are times when you have to have an action. An action. Glory to God. That's why it's important to hear the action. Now, this woman said, if I could but just touch the hem of his garment, like, uh, right, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go back. Verse 28. She touched his cloak because she thought she had to address her thinking. Proverbs 23, 7. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. She had to address her thinking pattern. She had to address everything that she knew from, from the religion, from the doctors, from the sickness, the symptoms. She had to address if I could touch. She said to herself, thoughts are words. What are you saying to yourself? The preacher can come and hype you up and get you excited. But if what you are saying to yourself you are not convinced with what you are saying to yourself. Remember, with the heart we believe, with the mouth we confess. Glory to God. So I have to believe. I have to speak it uh, upon myself. I have to declare it upon myself. I have to declare it until there is a manifestation. That's why the system of, I need this preacher to do this, to do that for me, to do this. Listen, let me tell you something. Everything has to come through your belief. If God places you, this preacher needs to do this for you. Good, great if that is your faith. But if you don't have faith, they can grease you up from head to bottom, glory to God, from the head to the soles of your feet. There will be no healing. It has to be, what are you saying to yourself? She said to herself, she said to herself, she thought to herself, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediate. I want you to take note. Her bleeding stopped and she felt it in her body that she was freed from her suffering. See the steps that she took. She pressed it through. She was not moved. I want you to take note. Remember, Jesus is on her way to Jairus' house. And Jairus' faith was for Jesus to touch the daughter. Now this woman, unclean, touched Jesus. This woman had heard Jairus cry, had heard Jairus faith, come and touch my daughter. Jairus was very important. She wa he was an important religious figure. But this woman did not allow that to move, to move him. Said, I don't care about Jairus. He, his faith is to touch, is for Jesus to lay hands on his daughter and that daughter to be him. But I'm going to press through. I'm going to touch. I'm going to disrupt whatever is happening because I'm going to pull it out. Jesus was minding his own business going somewhere. What's this? You will get it next time. <laughs> At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Power. The crowd were touching. But there was no power. It can be in church, you don't see the manifestation of power. And then a stranger comes in. Says, you mean you have been with this great man of God all these years and you are still going through this? Ah, <laughs> and they go and tap. And then you who have been the, the church five years, six years, seven years, because you, 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 you did not see the power. You did not discern the time. You did not discern what was in that man or what was in that woman. See, this woman descended and she went, she touched. But at once Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. See, there was power in Jesus, but somebody who had managed to tap into that power. There is power in Jesus, but we need to hear. The catalyst is in hearing, then we act it out. Action, glory to God. We do what we have heard, what we have heard. We don't do before we hear. We don't hear and sit idle. No, we do because we have heard. Now, who touched my clothes? You said the people crowding against you. His disciples answered. And yet you ask, who touched me? Are you crazy? Jesus knew that somebody, somebody touched him. Somebody pulled out virtue from him. May we pull out virtue today. But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to him, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear. She was expecting to be stoned because she was not allowed to do what she did. God had to do something extraordinary for this woman because she had extraordinary faith. She had extraordinary faith. Daughter, <laughs> your faith has healed you. Your faith has healed you. How many times do people pray, bombarding every whole Lord, if you could stretch forth your hands and heal? 
those are the wrong doctrines that we are talking about. There is healing in heaven. Jesus said, when you pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed is thy name, thy kingdom come. That is power, that is glory, that is a healing anointing. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Glory to God. There is no sickness or disease in, he in, in heaven. There is no lack of poverty in, in heaven. But we need to pull that down. We pull it down through our hearing and our action. Daughter, your faith has healed you. Healing is already there. But the faith is the currency to bring it to where we are. Everything we are believing God for is already done. But we need to pull it from heaven. Heaven is not doing anything new. But we need to pull it down. See, there are principles that God has given us. We work these principles. Glory to God. We come to him realizing that he's a good, good God. Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. <laughs> Father, I thank you. Thank you for you are a good God. You are a great God. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for what you are doing in our lives. We give you praise, Father, because you are a great God. You are an amazing God. Lord, I know this message has spoken to many people, Lord. People, Lord, those that will come in contact with this message, their lives will be changed. They will be transformed from glory to glory. Father, I thank you that we have addressed the strongholds. Lord, the strongholds have been broken this wonderful afternoon in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Father God, for this woman with an issue of blood. Thank you for the lesson that we are getting from her. In Jesus' mighty name, we bless you and we love you. In Jesus' name, glory to God. Welcome to the month of November, you are tremendously blessed. We receive grace upon grace. Take it away, our host, in Jesus' mighty name. Till we meet again on Thursday, have a wonderful, blessed afternoon. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus.